Hi everybody. So a frequent question I get is, am I a bit of a moron? And I suppose the answer is yes, because I'm always giggling like an idiot at things. I mean, I basically don't know that much, but I do have one thing going for me. I'm interested in stuff and it's astounding when you open a door how many other doors there are to investigate. It's really just about wanting to get up and do it. And of course in the video series 1696 or so to 1701, we've been looking at stoves and uh, multi-fuels and ways of keeping hot, ways of cooking, ways of lighting because of the impending crisis that we're all facing. And it was pointed out to me that, um, well, they all needed fuel. What do you do if you couldn't buy the methanol, couldn't buy the paraffin, couldn't buy this, couldn't buy that? And I thought that's actually a really fair comment. And it led to the idea of either using a different thing altogether or doing gasification. Now gasification in its essence is really simple. Now I will do a video on the principles of gasification, but they include a whole series of things including dehydration, destructive distillation, pyrolysis, and then the gasifying per se. And you see people building lots of gasifiers. This video is about the gasification stove that is stupidly easy to build because of course I'm into this kick about making things easy from everyday readily materials and I've gone down to my supermarket. Asda has supplied me with a can of mushy peas and a can of new potatoes. 55p for both of those. Now there's only one qualification for these two cans when you select them. First one, the little can must be smaller in diameter than the big can and it must be slightly shorter. Get two cans like that you can do this project okay we're going to open them and of course we now have a whole bunch of mushy peas and potatoes that we're going to have for lunch. Hey Luke Fancy some peas and potatoes for lunch, mate. <laughs> Sounds delicious mate. <laughs> it is. I love these new potatoes mate. So we're eating this week and actually on a separate note, a good friend of mine Paul Donner, he actually sent this box and, and we obviously get deliveries, we weren't expecting this delivery so Luke opened it up with the broom handle and a knife at the end of it and we both stood about 10 feet away while he tried to open it. As he opened it, it revealed Paul's gift, biscuits! <laughs> so we have peas, potatoes, got some... Um, <laughs> pork pies sitting on the corner we're going to have for lunch, followed by coffee and biscuits. So this week we eat well, thanks to Paul. Thank you Paul very much for that. Okay, let's get on with this. What we need to do is empty the cans and prepare them. Prepare them just means washing them out and taking the levels off. So we have our two cans. The prep work is dead easy. We need to drill a load of holes around here, a ring of holes here, and a ring of holes here. That's that one. This one we need a double ring of holes around here and a big hole in there that that one can fit in. Now I use this thing because this is one of the easiest ways I've found of drilling holes because you're not actually drilling them. It punches through the steel really easily. Let me show you. Hole. <laughs> okay, two rows of holes in the bottom and now we need to cut a hole in there. So I'll pop that one on there, draw around it. So the trick with this bit is to cut close to the line, then take a round file and file it down. And you want to file it down in only one direction. So you're not pulling it out, you file it down by pushing it in and that curls it over. Okay, that's that one done. Big hole there. Double ring of tiny holes at the bottom. We need to do this. We need a double ring of tiny ho uh, big holes here and we need to fill that bottom full of holes. We've got more holes in here than a colander and you'll notice at the top we've got a ring of evenly spaced little holes. These little holes are four millimetres. These big holes here and here are ten millimetres and that gets shoved in that hole that we cut earlier and it should be a tight fit. We can basically shove it down. Ta da That is our gasifying stove finished. Now we need to put some twigs in there and see how it goes. Okay, I've filled it full of twigs. Let's light it. <laughs> okay, we've put the mantle on that we used in video 1701 and you can see what it's done to the flame. That's amazing. That 
that's the difference the mantle makes. Isn't that awesome? That is a nice way. Yeah. It's now heating the mantle. Oh, that's glorious. You should be able to see there, it's just the jetting of the fuel from the holes we drilled in the side. So it's just the syngas that's burning. Okay, I mean, for such a simple thing, two cans stood inside of each other with some holes drilled in it, we effectively made a gasifier stroke mini rocket stove, and you saw what that flame was like when we added the mantle. We added the mantle because that's what changes a stove into a heater, which is what we discovered in 1701. Anyway, piece of cake to build, runs on wood, gives out some heat. I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.